team, um, welcome to another lecture. Uh, this time we're talking about ecosystem services, and this is a really interesting topic. Uh, we've been learning about ecosystems and this concept of biodiversity, and the way in which the stability of the ecosystem uh, is so important. And today we're going to continue that, and we're going to be thinking about how do stable ecosystems and how does biodiversity end up benefiting humans. Uh, so ecosystem services is just a way of saying that these are any of the processes or outputs that nature provides us with, um, or in short, it's just how do humans benefit and receive services from an ecosystem. All right, we, in order to maintain the quality of life that we know as human beings, what we like, the kind of houses we live in, the energy we need to power our life, the electronics that we use, um, right? They like released a new iPhone today. There's a lot that goes into creating that. Um, and we get most of that from the natural world in some way or another. Uh, so these are ecosystem services that we benefit from. There are four classifications of services that we are gonna go through and talk about. So the first is provisioning services. Um, if you, I was just talking this weekend about the Oregon Trail game, which is probably something that many of you have never heard of, but uh, in that trail game, you would get provisions, which would be the food, water, and supplies that you need to survive. So in a similar way, provisioning services are all the things that ecosystems provide us, such as the raw materials, food, shelter, energy, or just other resources. So these are, again, those resources that we use to maintain the quality of life that we are used to. There are certain things we need to be able to get from nature to live in the way that we know how to live. So this is everything from mining of minerals and fossil fuels and the, the elements in our earth that are used to make everything from cell phones. Um, cell phones use almost every rare mineral that exists on our earth is used in the the technology for a cell phone. This is the wood that is harvested to frame our home, um, but it is even the food we eat, the honey that the honeybees make uh, that we take in and we use to sustain life. So sort of any good or product that we consume is a provisioning service when it comes from an ecosystem or it comes from the natural world. Next we have regulating services. So these are things that ecosystems, that the environment naturally does that regulate our experience. So it's a benefit provided by ecosystem processes that moderate natural phenomena. So things that are already happening in nature uh, that we then benefit from. So there's a lot of examples. We think about pollination, right? The food that we eat depends on this pollination. And so it regulates the growth of our food the processes that exchange carbon and oxygen throughout the air, these are naturally occurring. They would occur whether humans were here or not, but we obviously benefit from the reduction and sequestering of carbon dioxide, as well as benefit from the release of oxygen that we need to survive. Um, another really great example, is, especially when we think about where we live, is flood control. So wetlands like the salt marsh that used to be here in New York City, are, they have the ability to have a rising and falling amount of water. So when flood water comes in because of heavy rain or a hurricane, wetlands can hold additional water and keep that water from seeping into spaces where people live. Uh, and so there are certain ecosystems that are going to be really beneficial for this, um, like a marsh. There are other things like disease control as well, and we'll learn about more of them in class the next time you're together with me. So next we have supporting services. So these are kind of, you could think about them almost as like background things that are happening. We maybe don't see them, we maybe don't benefit directly from them, but if they didn't occur, the provisioning and regulating services that we do benefit directly from could not happen. So this is everything from just the existence of the habitat that is necessary, right? You need a particular climate and type of soil, et cetera, for certain things to grow that we might harvest. Nutrient cycling, the movement of phosphorus and nitrogen in and out of atmosphere, in and out of the atmosphere and the geosphere um, 
things like the weathering that creates soil sedimentation that allows mountain ranges to be created, um, and even thinking about the way that ecosystems tend to naturally maintain biodiversity or the gene pool that allows for the variety of life that we use to sustain our living. And the final type of ecosystem service is cultural services. Uh, so these maybe don't have a benefit to humans in the sense of they are directly necessary for life, but they do tend to either benefit us in a spiritual or religious way or just a recreational way. Uh, things that are aesthetically pleasing and nice to look at, right? If you are anything like me, I love to be outdoors. I love to go hiking uh, and see nature. So that is a recreational use that the existence of ecosystems give me. If you are somebody who goes fishing just for fun, not necessarily for food, and you throw your fish back, you're getting a cultural use. Um, and then throughout history, many just different religions and ethnic groups have used various elements of nature as part of their spiritual practice. Uh, so one in particular that is well known and that is closer to me is the use of different animal parts in Indian dress. So you see here the the cultural headdress that was used as a status symbol in many Native American cultures. Um, and this is growing up in Oklahoma where the Cherokee Indians, I believe, if I am wrong on that, you can fact check me, but they would wear these headdresses as symbols of status, particularly the chiefs, right? And those bird feathers obviously came from the natural world uh, in such a way that was used for their cultural needs. Uh, and even things like people that go on safari or other activities that revolve around nature. Uh, and so there's a, with all of these different ecosystem services, the question is sort of, they benefit us as humans. And so there is a sort of mandate that we continue to preserve the ecosystems because we see the different ways in which we need healthy ecosystems for our way of life. Uh, and unfortunately, what we alternatively see is a lot of damage that has been done to these ecosystems that then in turn threaten our way of life if we cannot receive the services that we need to get from these ecosystems. So we're going to more fully explore the ecosystem services in class next time we are together and think about why they are so necessary and important and how we incentivize the maintenance of our ecosystems and our natural world to keep our ecosystem services. <laughs>